blood donation um, is an activity that should be done out of altruism, as in without being coerced. So we have the voluntary blood donors. A voluntary blood donor is somebody that comes out without any form of coercion, without any form of expectation of gifts or financial means, comes out to donate blood to save lives. Um, WHO mandates that in the year 2020, that 100% of all blood donations should be gotten from voluntary blood donors. In Lagos states, um, we are quite far from that. There's quite um, very poor sensitization and information about the needs and the advantages of voluntary blood donation. So we need to um, sensitize people, talk to people about it, educate the populace about what it means to be a voluntary blood donor, to be able to meet up with the WHO requirements. The way people come for blood donation, the first thing they do is to fill a questionnaire and some people are rejected based on the information they provided in the questionnaire. Particularly questions on, that border on tattoo, questions that border on um, when was the last time you visited prostitute, questions that border on profession, what kind of profession do you do? Are you a prostitute yourself? Are you gay? Are you a lesbian? So they don't even bother to screen them again. Once they fill the questionnaire, and then they fill the tool assessment, and then they are rejected. So the piercing of the ears is not uh, one of the questions in the questionnaire. Those are some of the questions that I mentioned. I can't remember everything very well, but mm -hmm. it's just to screen out okay. some people suspected to be infectious. You need to meet up with some um, criteria to donate blood. The first thing is the age. Your age should be between 18 and 65 years old. However, if you are going to be a first time donor, then you should have donated before the age of 60 years. The second thing is um, the weight. Your weight must be at least 45 kilograms. And then we need to consider the um, donor's hemoglobin level. It has to be between 12.5 to 13.5 milligram per deciliter. If it is less than that, the prospective donor will not be able to donate blood. However, with respect to tattoos, we have some deferral criteria. That means that the donor might not be able to donate at that point in time, but it does not completely negate the prospective donor from giving blood. Um, one is um, tattoos within six months of having the tattoo. So if your tattoo is fresh, then we will tell you to wait until after six months to donate. Tattoos is not a criteria for complete deferral from donating blood. We also have other deferrals like tooth extraction. When you have a tooth extraction, we advise you to come back for your blood donation. Others are um, pregnancies, um, um, breastfeeding mothers, women on their menstrual flow. Um, so not everything, those are not criteria that would make anybody be completely denied of saving lives. There needs to be more work done around campaigning about blood donation. So, for example, now the in the UK, there's the NHS blood and transplants, and they do like you know nationwide campaigns encouraging people to donate blood. Um, in America, the American Red Cross has nationwide campaigns, but you know all those kind of campaign activities require money and require funds. So we need to invest, um, you know, the government, people who care about blood donation, need to like donate towards education and campaign causes to to increase the level of voluntary blood donation. The thing about the tattoos and blood donation, it's a it's a myth. You're so, so according to the WHO, you can donate blood six months after you've gotten a tattoo. So the reason why they tell people that oh if you have a tattoo you can't donate blood is because of like the needles you you know it's needles that are used to give you a tattoo. So if you go to an unlicensed um, tattoo parlor in Nigeria, I don't think we have any like licensing board for tattoos um, or tattoo parlors. So if you get a tattoo in Nigeria or if you you know, there's no way to like verify that the needles are safe. You went to a, a sanitary, sterile place. So that's why 
you know, there are requirements that you wait. There's a win there's a waiting period of six months. The WHO recommends six months. Um, the American Red Cross also has the same um, policy where if you didn't go to a licensed tattoo shop, you wait 12 months. So between 12 months, you know, six months and 12 months after you got your tattoo, you can donate blood. So if you got a tattoo five years ago, that's not stopping you from, you know, that shouldn't stop you from donating blood. Lagos State is the only state in Nigeria that has a state policy with respect to blood transfusion. There's a policy that encourages an, um, voluntary blood donation by setting up um, hospital-based blood transfusion committees by encouraging voluntary donor drive. So once the policy is in, is in place, that's the first step any state needs to get the voluntary donor drives um, to meet up with the needs. A lot of advocacy are going on. Uh, we go to corporate organizations, we go to the um, markets, public places to tell people about the advantages and the needs to donate blood voluntarily. We also go to schools to educate students and we work with many NGOs and these NGOs um, that's non-governmental organizations also follow, carry the vision of Lagos State by educating as many people as they can about um, voluntary blood donation. There has to be like mass education campaign to let people know the importance of donating blood because a lot of people if you're not closely connected if you're not in healthcare or if you don't know somebody who um, needed blood, you may not know how important blood donation is. So there has to be a mass education campaign or, you know, mass reorient or reorientation, letting people know the consequences of insufficient blood supply. You know, that pregnant women die. One of the leading causes of maternal mortality in Africa, in the developing world, in Nigeria, is postpartum hemorrhage, where a woman, after giving birth, bleeds uncontrollably and, and dies. So like, if there is sufficient blood in the country, um, there'll be less women dying from postpartum hemorrhage because we'll have the blood they, you know, that's necessary to replace what they've lost. Um, chronic blood, they're chronic patients, people with chronic conditions like sickle cell, um, hemophilia, who need regular blood transfusions, they're accident victims, um, they are cancer patients, so there are different demographics, children under five who um, are the higher who, who malaria is the leading cause of one of the leading causes of of death of children under five and um, severe mal severe malarial anemia um, is actually what kills these children so blood is a an important therapy in um, helping these children so um, there are different demographics of people who actually need blood and the more people know about the the people who need blood and the consequences of insufficient supply I think more people will donate. I got to know about the um, donation of bank is through the radio. And my advice for people that are skeptical about donating blood is they should trust that, uh, that donating blood is safe and cool and also for saving life. My advice to the person who know what to donate blood. So donate blood is good and we are, if you donate blood it will be good at Good everything. Can no sick. As my as my own now and past ten years or twelve years, I no sick. I no see any malaria at all. When um, you donate blood to save a life, um, the blood follows many processes to be safe for transfusion for whosoever needs it. Uh, the blood is in a blood bag. Immediately after donation, it is kept in a blood bank for storage until it is screened. In Lagos states, we follow um, international best practices and every unit of blood in Lagos state is screened with the ELISA technology, which is a fourth generation technology. This technology makes sure that the window period of transfer, future transmitted infections, e.g. HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C and syphilis are completely negated such that there will be no false positive or false negative that is seen when you use the um, when you use the rapid test kits 
after the screener the blood is taken back to the blood bank for storage until a request is made when a request is made in the um, words on the words the blood is cross matched with the prospective patient's blood um, during this period everything that uses requires technology reagents manpower and electricity based on this um, this the money that is being paid for every unit of blood is for these processes to make the blood safe for usage. We don't have a culture of voluntary blood donation. So if people were donating regularly and freely, there'll be enough blood supply where, you know, you can just take whatever. But hospitals require patients to bring replacement donors because without a replacement donor like there's no there won't be any stock left in the bank so like if you went to the hospital and you got blood then the next person who comes there won't be something for them to use we're trying to shift the makeup of blood supply to be 100 percent voluntary blood donor based so that people and who go to the hospital and need blood and their family members they won't be under duress to donate blood instead you know they will donate freely when they get, get to hospitals they will be able to receive freely and at a different time they'll be able to donate freely well average cost of the blood in nigeria is 15000 in a private lab private blood bank but in government hospitals in lagos it is uh, 7000 naira and then the donor will be expected to bring, I mean the patient will be expected to bring a donor to replace the blood use, which is unacceptable, is not the best international practice, and then it is uh, condemned by the World Health Organization. By being a voluntary blood donor, you are actually reducing the cost of blood because Right now, Nigeria, about 60% of the blood used in Nigeria comes from paid donors. And those paid donors, they are at a higher risk of transfusion, trans transmissible infections, like HIV and syphilis and hepatitis, because you know, they are motiv mo they're motivated by money and they are more prone to lie about their risk factors. You know? And the blood, they, and they, sometimes they donate more frequently than they should. So that means that their blood is not as like, rich or poor or effective in treating people who need blood transfusions. Um, but they also cost money to recruit. So paid donors, like you have to pay them to, to donate blood. We work with uh, some hospitals like this. Um, so LifeBank, we've created a fund called BOAT, Blood and Oxygen Access Trust, which is a fund uh, created to supply blood and oxygen free of charge to people who need blood or oxygen and cannot afford it. So what we do is we work with hospitals to identify such patients and we you know, supply to them free of charge. One of the hospitals we work with is Igbologu Medical Center. They are located on Snake Island, which is an island off the coast of Lagos. It is you know, very rural, um, there's no running water, you know, and the people who live there are mostly fishermen, petty traders, and yeah, they don't have a lot of money. And because they are in a riverine area, there's a lot of malaria. Um, the women who give birth sometimes have postpartum hemorrhage. So we help people like that who might need blood and can't afford it. We help them, you know, we supply blood to them free of charge. So please, please donate blood voluntarily. Prospective voluntary donors out there, um, there is a great need for blood. We have uh, pregnant women that die out of blood loss. We have sickle cell patients that die because they need blood. We have accident victims that die because there is no blood when they need it most. I'm calling on you all to please work out, donate blood to save these lives. And not just that singular donation is needed, but the regular donation is what will keep the blood banks filled for any need in future.